It's 2022 and we're in January, so you know what that means. It's terrible movie season! All the big blockbusters were shat out in November and December, leaving January the sad misfit toy that none of the kids want to play with. Although I think Scream? Doesn't the new Scream come out this month? Or maybe, let me look, let me, let me look. I stand corrected, the new Scream comes out next week, so that's troubling. But maybe, just maybe it'll be okay. I passed up on Sing 2, I found Sing 1 to be pretty awful, I can't imagine the sequel is going to be better. Uh, please let me know in the comments if you saw it and if I'm wrong. I also didn't go to 355. That's a, that's a movie featuring Jessica Chastain and a couple of other STRONG FEMALE LEADS! It's full of them. And you know what? It's about time. It looks atrocious. Although it is one of those movies just ripe to make fun of. So I'll make you a deal. If I can get my Patreon numbers to 70, it's not a lot to ask. I think I'm at 60 five or 66 right now it's like it's like four or five more i'll go to this movie if i can get that to 70. it's patreon.com slash adam does movies you should really support me anyways there's a dollar tier it's it's not even a the fifth of a price of a starbucks coffee or you could be a join member right here on youtube and then i'm only looking for like three more if we can get that number to just an even 20 uh, I'll, I'll go see 355 but let's get on to the point of this video which has Virtually nothing to do with what I've talked about so far. It's impressive how long I've wasted everyone's time here. No, the reason is, since January is such a garbage month, I thought it would be fun to do something wildly different. I thought some positivity to kick the year off would be a good thing, especially when my last video was the top 10 worst movies of 2021. Let's have a little bit of fun and joy here. So with that, I give you my lead and bumper, followed by 10 movie quotes I love to say. And they're not even necessarily popular ones. In fact, some of them aren't at all. And that's why I like it. It's for me. It's only for me. Let's begin. Another video, potential, short for potentially, would be top 10 movie quotes of all time. Like, you're gonna need a bigger boat. Would probably be one I would put on the list. It's, it's a guarantee. But for now, let's get started. In the number 10 spot might be a quote that only I and I alone use. No one gets it when I do it. It's very uncomfortable. It's only from it's only for me. And I'm sure you're in the same situation as a movie fan. You might quote something from a film that's obscure or just a one-off line that no one even knows. Uh, but you're, you're not really there for the audience, you're there for yourself, because you're the number one fan, right? So in my 10 spot is a line from Fantastic Four, where Doctor Doom says, I always wanted power. You planned this. I've always wanted power. It's so weird. It's the actor from Nip Talk, totally miscast as Dr. Doom. He was just comically bad in this. The way he talked and acted was just so bizarre. Everything is off about it. I will try to show clips when applicable, when I can find them, and when YouTube isn't gonna demonetize the shit out of this video because they hate when you show movie clips with audio. If you show movie clips, you have to like do four second chunks. That's what I've, I've learned over my time working with Screen Rant and just on my own. You have to keep it to four seconds or less. That's a tip for people that have their own YouTube channels. You can show a bunch of movie trailer in a row, but it has to be four second intervals. So take like Spider-Man swinging and then move forward like 10 seconds into the trailer and take another shot. You're welcome. I've always wanted power. <laughs> Austin Powers is one of the most quotable movies of all time, and in the future when I do a top 10 most quotable movies list, that's absolutely on there. It's in the top three for sure. The one that I use to an almost obnoxious degree is the see you in the future, Mr. Powers. It's just so easy to throw out when someone's leaving the room, leaving work, just just any anytime someone's leaving. See you in the future, Mr. Powers. It's easy. It's easy breezy. It's, it's a reference that most people understand. See you in the future, Mr. Powers. I like it. I like it a lot. Bad Dumb and Dumber reference. Subscribe. Number eight comes from the brilliant Uncle Buck, one of my favorite comedies, just full stop. And it's from the always reliable Macaulay Culkin. Uncle Buck's in the kitchen making breakfast. He's got eggs, onions, a bunch of other stuff. It doesn't look appetizing. And Macaulay Culkin's character turns and says, He's cooking our garbage. The way he delivers it is perfection. And it's a phrase that's easily accessible. People are cooking all the time. It's not hard. It's not hard to throw that out. 
We have a two for one deal here with the Matrix, two for the price of fun. I got one from Cypher and one from Switch that I use on a pretty regular rotation. Oh, and by the way, with movie quotes, you always have to do it way more over the top than the movie does itself. And it's weird, usually when I first start doing these quotes, saying them back to friends, I don't even realize how over the top you're doing it. I go back and watch the original movie and I think, wow, it's actually far more subdued than how I deliver, but that's part of the charm. So how's he gonna be the one if he's dead? And the other one is Switch. I think we all know where we're going with this one. Not like this. Not like this. So, I mean, that one's very easy to use if something bad's happening in life, if you're, you're being a little you know jokey about it, there's a situation that's uncomfortable. Not like this. Not like this. Not like this. Not like this. The how's he gonna be the one if he's dead? I'll just throw that out. I don't even need an invitation for it. We might be playing a game of uh, Monopoly and uh, just out of nowhere, someone's on Park Place. How's he gonna be the one if he's dead? I wanna remember nothing. Nothing. God, Cypher's quotes are so good. I use that one a lot too. I mean, how can he be the one if he's dead? Might have to make that top 10 most quotable movies list. Matrix might be on there as well. Let's keep going. We have another two for fun here with Lord of the Rings. Uh, I believe both of them are from Gandalf the Grey. At the time he's grey, not Gandalf the White yet. We have Fly You Fools. I like to bring out the accent. I like to get into character when I do it. I'm not gonna do it now because I'm not in the mood. It's a hard one to perform on the fly and I'm not that good of an actor. So I'll show the clip. Fly you fools. And then the other one is Fool of a Toque. Now that one I don't need to be in character. I can just say, you fool of a toque. That one, that, that's just a nice insult to throw at someone. Fool of a took. Pippin, uh, Pippin screwed the pooch there when he knocked that armor down the well. Kind of woke up, he stirred up all the creatures in the depth of, of the mines. Um, so yeah, if someone screws something up, it's a nice thing to throw at him. Let him know that you mean business. Let him know you mean business. How's he gonna be the one if he's dead? I think this is a fairly popular quote for people in their 30s, like myself. You're killing me, Smalls. It's a Sandlot reference. It's a classic. Ham throws it out at Scotty Smalls, who's just being a complete idiot. He doesn't know what a s'more is. You're killing me, Smalls. You're killing independent George. It's another one, but that's Seinfeld. So it's, it's not the same. I brought this one up earlier. It is a total basic bitch quote from a movie. A lot of people misquote it. You're gonna need a bigger boat. Roy Scheider just walks into the scene up to Quint and he's like, you need a bigger boat. This is not gonna happen. We got a, we got a giant ass shark out there. He's breaking this thing down. <laughs> what are we doing here? We got three guys on a boat trying to take down this king. Or is it a queen? I guess, I guess. I mean, the robot shark was a, a male. They called it uh, Bruce but I believe the shark in the movie is female. Might be wrong. I've only seen Jaws like 50 times, so yeah. I'm gonna need a bigger boat. When people think of diehard quotes, usually the first one that pops to mind is yippee ki -yay, motherfucker, or Welcome to the party, pal! Hans, booby, I'm your white knight. I like to go off the beaten path. You use a sword, I use a fountain pen. I'm not even quoting Ellis. I like to quote really random shit, like the dudes speaking in German, I think, when they're like, Weise, Weise, oh, Weise. That, I love that. They're just they're just riffing, or I don't know what they're saying even. It could be gibberish for all I know, but I really, if you, if you speak whatever language they're speaking, let me know what they're saying in the comments. I'd appreciate it. My quote is from Die Hard 2, Die Harder. <laughs> this is the most, Easily the most random quote on the list, and I guarantee I am the only person on planet Earth who uses this quote. No one gets it except for people I've explained it to. So now I, ha I have friends now that I'm sharing this with, so it's nice. If I can get people saying this, I mean, you, you know, one person says it to two other people, two other people say it to four other people, and we get a snowball effect, and pretty soon everyone's saying, there's the quote, there's your Annex Skywalk. Yeah, that's, that's the line. That's a raised platform, and there's a new terminal. There's your skywalk. Wow, is that a random, weird thing to utter, right? Uh, it's when John McClane's down in, like, the sewer system. 
uh, old man Marley or whatever his name is. He's sweeping. He doesn't usually get, you know, tourists down there. And he just happens to have the schematics for the new Annex Skywalk that's being built. And, and he's like, there's the tunnel. There's the shaft you need to go in. There's your Annex Skywalk. And he's just so excited about it. It's great. I looked it up. Tom Bowen is the actor. He played Marvin. Good old reliable Marvin. One of the greatest custodians to ever walk the earth. How could you possibly use this quote in a public setting? Well, for starters, you have to have no self-respect. Check, right? Done and done. Secondly, you can't be afraid to say something that uh, no one's gonna understand. If you have friends that understand the reference, then it becomes a little bit more of a ball game that everybody's invited to watch instead of a one-man show. There's a lot of opportunities to use this quote. Someone doesn't know how to get somewhere. You bring up Google Maps. You say, there's the directions you need. There's the house. There's your skywalk. And let's go on to the next. Try land is not a myth. I've seen it. Kevin Costner, Waterworld. That's not a quote from Waterworld. In fact, I don't think it's even a quote in Waterworld. That's a quote from Jim Carrey as Chip Douglas in The Cable Guy. I wouldn't be surprised if that's a line Jim Carrey just pulled out of his ass because as far as I can remember, and it's been 84 years since I last watched Waterworld, but I don't remember Kevin Costner was saying dry land's not a myth. I've seen it. He might say something similar, but I don't believe that's ever uttered. So, Jim Carrey's dry land's not a myth, I've seen it. I like to throw that out. I like to use that. My number one favorite line to quote is from Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, when Harry's on the ground like a little bitch. Voldemort's back, he's over him, presiding over him with his wand, and he says, you're a fool, Harry, and you will lose everything. That's not the line, I'm leading into it. Although I do like to utter that too. It's when Harry gives his retort to Voldemort. He's looking up on the ground. You'll never know love or friendship. And I feel bad for you. We always do it in a really, really over the top way. Really pronounce those words hard. You'll never know love or friendship. He doesn't do it like that. <laughs> we just recently rewatched him and he says, a pr you know, he's, he's pretty straight with it. You'll never know love. Oh, friendship. It's easy to use when someone doesn't understand something, when they're confused or angry. You can throw it at them. It's, 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 it's so much fun. I love quoting movies. Okay, I lost track. I think that was 10. I jotted them down on my computer. I'm looking down at it. I'm not looking down at my penis because that's honestly... Got like a magnifying glass to help me out. Um, it's off camera though, and uh, I didn't number it. Now is when the participation awards start to come out. What is your favorite quote to do from a movie? You can give me top five, top 10. I'll probably know some of them, might not know some, and that's, that's just as fun. Like the video if you had a good time with this. Subscribe if you wanna stick around, and we'll see you in the future, Mr. Powers. Ah, there was the quote, I did it. There's your Annex Skywalk. Hey, since I still have you here, I always wanted power, and more importantly, I always wanted more patrons. I brought it up earlier, but I'd really like a, I'd really like to go see 355 in theaters. I think that that's a movie that's just begging for a review from me. So one more time, I implore you to head on over to patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. Get that ticked up to 70. It's not a long way. We're, we're pretty close. Or join here. I get three more join members on YouTube because the price point is like $4.99 a month. Some badge icons and, and access to some exclusive videos. Um, but it's really more just like, hey, Adam, we like the show. We like what you're doing. Here, here's a couple bucks. And I appreciate that.